Praise the Lord. We're here for a celebration. This is a great, was a great lady and a very special person. Uh, look at this picture right here in the middle. It looks like there's three of them, though. Uh, well, I knew two. And, well, I knew the other one, but I, not as well. But three special people and a special husband and family. And we're here to celebrate a very, the, the one that's very special, and that is Jean Jean. And uh, later on in the service, we, you are going to have an opportunity to be able to share just a little bit, too. And what we'd like for you to do when uh, Pastor James or whoever invites you to, uh, th be thinking of a word or two words maybe uh, to express about her, that it might be love, joy. I don't want to use any of your words, but uh, just anything that would, would encourage and help and just point out the type of person she was. And you'll be cued to do that at that time. You know, I was uh, I kind of privileged to be able to be here uh, because I, I was thinking about when y'all first started coming uh, and when Dad was here, and uh, a very special person too. I wanted to recognize him, but uh, I'd like, before we get started going any further, let's stand. I want us to pray, we would. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you, Jesus, and at this time we ask for your help, but at the same time we give thanks for the life that has been lived before us that we've seen that's meant so much to us, Jesus, and, and, and touched our hearts and our lives. And uh, Lord, uh, we'll never forget some of the things that we even learned from her during her time here and me as her pastor that I knew and what I experienced with her, Jesus. We ask for your help this morning and pray that you would have your way. We don't want what we want. We want what you would have for us to be able to represent her in a way that she would be proud of and be blessed by, and the family too, Jesus. We love you. We thank you. Thank you for what you've done in our lives, Father, in thy name. Amen. You may be seated. You know, uh, she's not here anymore, but I know a place where she is.
like I was saying, uh, during the years, the last couple of years, especially when she was going through a lot of the storms that she was in and, and the valley she went through and the, the things she had to, to go through, uh, I really saw something that meant a lot to me as a, as a minister, as a pastor, and I saw a change take place. I saw a person who, just like any of other people, us, us ourselves, would be troubled about death and would be struggling about it and, and question. And, but I, I saw something happen as, she, as things got closer to that time, and I saw a peace. And I really, really, the last time I visited a few weeks ago, when I sat down and we talked and was there, I guess I could just tell she, there was a peace that she had that passeth all understanding. And it just blessed me so much to be able to fellowship with each one of you, of the family, and be there with her. But, and I was thinking about that, and uh, uh, there's a, a scripture that came to me that says in, in the Song of Solomon 2.1, it says, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. And uh, that's what we just sang about. I found the lily in my valley. And that li- lily is Jesus. That lily is God. And, and the essence of that, I don't, I don't know if you know, but a fox, for instance, a fox, when he's out and the hounds are after him, you know what he does? To be able to escape from that predator, he will go and lie down in the lilies, and that aroma will take away from them being able, able to smell the fox and find the fox. And in, in that, among those lilies, there's a peace that comes. And in my mind, that's sort of what I, I saw. I, I saw her lie down uh, uh, among the lilies, among Jesus. I saw her climb up in, into his arms, sort of, in my spirit, and, and, and be able to find that peace that passes all other. Sta- all other. And, and I want to say to you this morning, if you're out there and you don't have that peace, you can find that peace right now. I'm thankful I found the lily in my valley, and she found the lily in her valley too. All alone and broken hearted Trying to calm the raging battle in my mind In search of many answers That my troubled soul just couldn't seem to find I saw a flower blooming where there was no rain or sunshine and I knew not that this flower would change the rest of my life I found the lily in my valley I found strength when I was warm I found a place to leave my burdens I found a refuge from the storm A place where I trade my dark skies For beaming rays of sunshine I found the lily in my valley And he blooms all the time So if you're down and broken hearted And you just can't seem to find peace of mind You're searching for your answers And your problems are getting worse all the time 
Just reach your hand to Jesus. He'll take you in and break the tie that binds. He'll be your lily in your valley. And you can watch him bloom all the time. He'll be your lily in your valley. He'll be strength when you're warm. He'll be a place to leave your burdens. He'll give you refuge from the storm. A place where you trade your dark skies for beaming rays of sunshine. bloom all the time I found the lily in my valley I found strength when I was warm I found a place to leave my burden I found a refuge from the storm I found my lily in my valley And he blooms all the time I found the lily in my valley And he blooms all the time Good morning. It's my uh, privilege to be uh, part of this service this morning. Our prayers are uh, with the family. I've been asked to um, to read, and um, you've probably read it already, but uh, you can read it along with me if you'd like. Jean Jean, 71, passed away peacefully on December 13th after a long and courageous battle with cancer. She was born on December 29, 1945, in Beach Grove, Indiana, to Floyd and Phyllis Wilde as an identical triplet. Jean was a member of Oakmont Church of God and loved her church family so much. She worked for a short while at Western Electric in Indianapolis before moving to Lake St. Louis, Missouri, and then to Shreveport. Proceeded in death were her parents and sister Anita, those left to cherish her memory are her husband, Doug Jean, of 51 years, son, Scott Jean, and wife, Melissa, of Lafayette, Indiana, and daughter, Carla Curtis, of Lafayette, Indiana, grandchildren, Kennedy and Carter Jean, and Crystal Curtis, all of Lafayette, Indiana, sisters, Jane Packard and husband, Tom, of Lafayette, Indiana, and Joan Thompson and husband, Larry, of Shreveport, Louisiana as well as many cousins, nieces, and nephews. She enjoyed bowling on many leagues through the years, playing cards, and working jigsaw puzzles. Jean was a very caring person who loved her family dearly. It's nicely written. So much more, though, isn't there, <laughs> than what you can put in a, an insert what um, struck me about that was uh, in that last part, it says she enjoyed. You know, I, I remember her enjoying things, how she enjoyed playing games and um, just the joy you can see on her. And there was, um, there's something about joy that even though you're going through a hard, difficult circumstances, you can still have joy in things. 
And that comes through knowing Jesus. And uh, he gives us joy. You know, we sing the song, especially this time of year, joy to the world, the Lord has come. And Jean knew the Lord, and he was her joy. No matter what the circumstances surrounding her were, the difficulties that she had to endure, she endured them with joy because the joy she had in her Lord. There's something we say around here a lot, is that uh, Jesus is the way to life. And um, I believe she found her joy and she found life in Jesus. And that was um, exhibited most uh, profoundly on the cross, a song that uh, she loved and was requested to be sung today is the old rugged cross. You know, on that cross is where we find life through Christ. There's a scripture in 2 Corinthians 5.21 talking about how uh, God, God's plan through Jesus was this. He said, He made Him, speaking of Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And Jean was able to know that. And uh, she knew that her life was through Jesus, and that came because of that reconciliation that God had planned through the cross of Jesus Christ. And that old rugged cross, there's a, a line in it that says, We're the dearest and best. And that's why it made me think of this scripture. Speaking of Jesus, we're the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. That was that great exchange. The sin that we have was put on him, and he exchanged the righteousness that he had to us so that we are not, um, we have the righteousness of Christ on us because of the cross. And Jean was able to uh, experience that and know that, and she had joy because of that. So I'm going to um, attempt to sing this song that was requested. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross Exchange it someday for a crown. On that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God. Left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Now hang on to this one. To the old rugged cross, I will ever be true. It's shame and reproach. 
gladly bear And he'll call me someday To my home far away Where his glory forever I'll share So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it some time now when you can make some comments, but I'm going to say one now, my comment. <laughs> so I hope I don't steal anybody's, but you know, we can cling to a lot of things in this world, but they won't mean anything at, at a point. And Jean knew that she could cling to the cross, and that makes the difference for eternity. And um, her faith her faith in that and knowing what to cling to, what to hold tightly to, and what to hold loosely to made the, all the difference. And we're uh, thankful for the faith that we saw exhibited in her life and that we could uh, look to, even as an example for our life. This time, uh, Pastor James, you want to? Sure. The Lord has already made this a wonderful memorial if you can call it wonderful. And I do. I call it wonderful because you're all here celebrating this and honoring a wonderful lady. Look at the crowd that showed up. Look at the friends. All the families up in Indiana, but look at all the friends that are here. I see, I've, I've already met bowling league friends. Tons of church people here. A nurse Denise. We're grateful that you're here. At this point, we want to um, give you the opportunity. Like has been said, if you could, um, if you can think of a couple of words or a couple of virtues or characteristics of Miss Jean, that right now you'd like to honor her and just say, this is who I think she really was. Shout that out. What are some words? Gentle, brave. praying, brave. brave, definitely brave, very special, lovely, very humble, a great wife. Okay. She said all of Jean's friends felt like her best friends because that's the way she treated them. Glenn, that's awesome. Well, that's a great thing to say. Tenacious. Caring and compassionate even in her suffering.
Ma'am, what's your name? Lisa Fitzpatrick. Lisa Fitzpatrick. Thank you for being such a good neighbor and a good friend. I wish that the family members, they're going to get to hear this video and they're going to get to hear all these wonderful remarks that you all shouted out. I wish they could see your face and I wish that they could have heard that. I wish we had a microphone we could have given to you for those of you who couldn't hear in the back. But it was a wonderful, wonderful thing to say. If I were uh, if I were going to throw a word out there, I'm going to throw out the word hope. Um, and I'm going to get to that here in a second. But before I do, I want to I want to say a few words as well to Doug. I said it on Sunday morning, but we all really want to say thank you for being such a faithful and devoted husband for 51 years. You know, I remember whenever my great grandmother and my I've had family members that have lost their spouses. You can drive down the road and it seems like the rest of the world's just living like normal. And your world has just been crushed. We had a Christmas party here last night, Doug, and you came. And everybody's celebrating, but you're grieving. It's Christmas time. You know, life is full of memories. And some of them are full of joy and some of them are full of just sadness and pain. And there's times when you can be remembering and all of a sudden you find out you're smiling or maybe even laughing because you remembered something wonderful that happened in your life. Right. And then there's times that you're driving down the road and you your wife or your spouse or your friend would say to you, what's wrong? And it's because you're remembering something painful. This life can be very hard and it can be very good. Now, I don't remember if it was you, Joan, or if it was you. Uh, Doug that said this, but we know, we know that she was fighting cancer since 1994. That's a long time. We know that our bodies are like the Bible says that we're we're like flowering grass that's here today and it's gone tomorrow. We know that this world is very temporary, like when you go outside on a cold day and you breathe and then it's you see your breath, but then it's gone. That's what the Bible compares our lives to. But one of you two said that just recently you came home and she said, this isn't my home. I don't live here. We think she might have been confused, but she wasn't really. This world isn't her home. She doesn't live here. None of us are supposed to consider this world our home. 
I say this often because the Bible says it and because it's true. But if all we do is live for this world and this world only, then everything that we live for is down here. The Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If your treasure is on earth, then the day that you close your eyes for the last time, the day that your flower finally fades, then everything you've lived for is over. And death has great sting and great pain. But if your treasure is in heaven and your world is not down here, your home is not down here, but you're just passing through. If your citizenship is really in heaven and everything you treasure is up there. Then when death comes and you close your eyes for the last time, everything you're living for is waiting for you. That's whenever the Bible says, death, where is your sting? But for folks like Doug and us who are here right now, but especially you, Doug, and especially you, Joan, and the other two twins that are going to be listening and watching the video, and Larry, this is temporary, sir. I'm not saying that because I, it's me. No, this is what the Bible says. This is temporary. It's a temporary separation. I'd like to you all to, if you have a Bible, you can turn there. I, I think Brandon will, will give it to us on the board. It's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And uh, as I was asking the Lord, if he was in my place, what would you say? And this scripture is just made to order. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 Brandon, can you give that to us? Here it is. Paul is saying, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep. You need to know that the Bible says, Jesus said it whenever he was here, that anyone who dies on earth, if you are a believer, if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, if Jesus has taken away your sins, he doesn't consider you to have died. He considers you to have fallen asleep. Because it's so temporary. He says, I don't want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. The world has no hope. They think they do. They've got false hope. They make up things. They're using their own wisdom. But what I can tell you, Mr. Doug, is this. There's great hope. And if I could characterize Miss, Miss Jean Jean, it would be, there's a woman of hope. She understood that hope. Verse 14 says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him. Isn't that awesome? You see what that says? The Bible says to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. People can argue with that all they want to, but the Bible says it. And the Bible says that one day when Jesus comes back, he's going to bring with Miss Jean Jean and everybody else who has died in Christ. All of those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. One day when Jesus comes back, he's going to come back on a he's going to come back in the clouds and all the angels are going to be with him. But the Bible says right here, where is Miss Jean Jean right now? She's with him. You can't say she's not. She's up there right now and she's going to come back with him because the Bible says so. We're not putting our hope anywhere except for what God says. He cannot lie. Isn't that awesome? And then in verse 15, it says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, we shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. The Bible says in verse 16, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. You see what that says? Gene Gene's going to come back. I love it whenever people we know that someone's a believer because then I can speak so confidently. I've done many funerals where I can't really speak that confidently because the fruit of their lives just didn't prove that they believed. 
The fruit of their lives didn't prove that they had faith. I love what Scott said. She had faith. We know it because the fruit of her life just proved it. You all know it. It says that Jesus is going to come back and whenever he does, that Gene, Gene and the dead in Christ, they're going to rise first. And then verse 17, look what it says. Then we who are alive, if we're still here when Jesus returns, if we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. It says in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord. And now check it out. That's what you know what that means. Yeah. And there it is. Verse 18. And now comfort one another with these words. What else would I want to say this morning? What else could there be said this morning? This is where the comfort is. This is where the hope is that this is temporary. When Jesus comes back. If you're still alive when he does. Now, if you've passed on, then you're going to come with him in the air if you believe and you prove that through your actions. But flesh and blood, we can't make it to heaven in this thing, this tent, because the Bible says the perishable can never inherit the imperishable. This body is dying. It's a flower quickly fading here today and gone tomorrow. But if Jesus comes back, guess what's going to happen? The Bible says we're going to be instantly changed. We're going to put on a glorified body and we're going to be instantly changed. And we're going to get our resurrection body and he's going to change us just like that. In the twinkling of an eye. Like lightning that is visible from the east, is, you can see it in the west. It's going to be that quick. And every eye will see him come. And every knee will bow and say, your Lord. Even the ones that pierced him. Even the ones that crucified him are going to see him. Heaven and hell will see him come back. She says, I don't live here. She says, this isn't my home. And she didn't know it, but she was right. Would you all bow your heads with me? My father, I need you to help me to pray right now according to your will. Father, there's going to be times when Mr. Doug is going to be all by himself and he's going to be staring at a ceiling. And Lord, he needs your comfort right now. This whole entire congregation, would you agree with me in prayer? Father in heaven who sits on the throne, would you have mercy on Doug? God, would you give him a comfort and a peace that passes understanding? Would you continue to help his faith and Lord, help it to endure, help him never to fail in his faith. God, I pray that you would give him joy and that whenever he has bad memories, Lord, that he would trade them in for good. That God, you would help him to captivate and to take prisoner every thought. That God, we pray that you would help him not to be hearing from any voice other than yours. That, Lord, if there are voices from, from neighbors, from friends, from, from, from me, from anybody, Lord, that doesn't come from you. Lord, help them to discern that. God, help them never to hear from the enemy. But, Lord, help them to hear from you. And, God, I pray that you would comfort him. Lord, for the whole family who isn't necessarily, they're all not here. But, Lord, for Joan and Larry who's here. God, for the family that's going to be maybe watching this video. God, would you please touch them. And God, would you please comfort them? But God, right now, we want to say thank you. God, we praise your name, all of us. We say thank you, God, for your word that tells us the truth. My God, I thank you for the hope that we've got that isn't false hope, that isn't made up hope, but that's the real thing. God, I thank you that you have put such a faith in Miss Jean that we can sit here tonight and we can have this morning and we can have faith and we can have hope because her fruit Prove that she believed in you. God, we know you're the judge. And we, God, we know you're merciful. We know that all who believe in Jesus, all who, who look upon your son, will not perish, but have eternal life. God, bless these now who have come. I pray for them. God, according to your will, that, Lord, they would not be living for this world that's so temporary. God, that you would help me not to live for this world that is so temporary, that we could use... 
God, that you would use this death and this memorial service to touch our hearts. And that, God, you would change us and help us to be better people. Help us to be better people that live for you and not for ourselves. That live for the world to come and not for this world. God, do that work in me. If you want that work in you, say, Lord, me, do that work in me. God, as these days go on and the rest of this day goes on, Lord, thank you for, for Jean Jean and for God. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we're going to get to see her again. And it's all because of you, Jesus, because you died on the cross for us. God, we thank you. Jesus, we owe our lives to you. We thank you, holy God, because you created this world and you did not leave us to die in our sins. Thank you, Jesus. If you all agree with that gratitude and that, that prayer of thanksgiving, everybody say amen. 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 Would you all please stand? Thank you all for coming today. Thank you for honoring Miss Jean Jean's life. Uh, please remember Brother Doug in the days to come, especially you who have lost your own husbands or wives. You know what it's like. You know what he needs. Please pray for him. Hug a bunch of people right now and make everybody feel loved and make everybody feel welcomed. And thank you for coming. Dream.